then poop there. It's a big one because you you took it with the poop. But it's okay. I'm Steph, this is my husband Pete, and this is our two-year-old son, Hayes. We were selected by Airbnb to travel the world for a year, calling a new destination home for a month at a time. Subscribe to follow along. We've been in <laughs> We've been in Marrakesh for almost one month now, so this video that's not helpful. <laughs> this video So this video is a compilation of some of our favorite things in the city. So without further ado, and in no particular order, let's get started. Hayes and I are in heaven, and Pete is speeding us along. He's not allowing me to make eye contact with anybody. We're walking way too fast. There's so much to look at. Whoa. Hayes is literally like clapping and shrieking in his stroller. This is toddler paradise. All it's I want to do is stare at the monkey in the diaper. It's animal cruelty. So the, so the monkeys want to be here? No. Do the snakes want to be here? No. I don't know about the snakes. I, well, I spoke to one and he said, Does your no. son, does it bring your son joy? Yes. The main square in Marrakesh. Jema means mosque, but the special kind of mosque that you can worship in on Friday, whereas masjid means the mosque that you can worship in the five times of the day, but not on Friday. Zahi told us that. I'll need to confirm. Ilfna means courtyard or square. It also means death or distinction. So there's a number of translations of what this could mean, but it's a big open courtyard in front of a mosque. If you come to Marrakesh, this will be on your list of things to do. When it's not on your list, you will pass through it to get almost everywhere, every day, like we've done. It changes over the course of the day. This guy hello, has a restaurant. Hello. <laughs> Come home. Plenty of things to eat here in the evening. I'll spin you around. You'll see all the like stands um, set up. All of the stands here have numbers, so the guys come out and try to get you to go to their number stall. I wish I knew how many were there were, because there's what hundreds. Is what is that? What is it? Tanja. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. In the day, they're just carting around big piles of these poles setting up. None of these tents are here. If you come here a few hours ago, it's really incredible. It's a totally different square in the evenings. Right, we're eating at one of the booths, number 14 to be exact. We read that it was a good one. Uh, we're having some calamari and some other things. The locals here, it's really fun. Great food, and the whole meal was only 50 lira, so about $5. You guys behind me are eating um, a snail soup that's famous here. We tried some on a food tour. We didn't love the food tour, but I will insert us trying the snails. Spoiler alert, I wasn't a fan. Are you trying to be pregnant or be? No? Fair enough. Crack on. Is that the right answer? Crack on the soup, Steph. That's good. It means good you will soup. be horny tonight. Go ahead. Wait, but why, if I was trying to be pregnant, shouldn't I have the soup? No, because it, you will, uh, it will release a lot of hormones that is not good for them. Oh, but you have okay. to be horny to get pregnant. It sounds uh, counterintuitive to me. You can chew it as well when you die. Wow. And with this, you can... Soup is very... Wow. Yeah. It's very nice, very salty. Oh, here we go. It's a big one because you... You took it with the poop. Tons of delicious juice, a million things to buy, a lot of ladies trying to get you to buy a henna tattoo. It's just, there's a lot of simulation here and I don't know how else to describe it. And now we finally made it up to one of the rooftops to check out the square from above. I think I said in a previous clip that this square looks totally different depending on the time of day that you're here. Right now it's about 9 a.m. and it's completely empty. You would have never known that it looked like it did last night. We've been in Marrakesh about a week. We've walked through the souks. 
many times, but we haven't actually purchased anything. So this morning, we're gonna go get lost and actually do a little bit of shopping. We're trying to buy a piece of art or something flat in each destination. I'm happy with my purchase of this footballer. Uh, I did some good negotiation. That was fun in the end. I thought I pissed him off, but he came back and we had a good laugh. Uh, so this is coming home with us. There had to be something annoying about traveling for a year, which there's not. It's unbelievable. It's that I want to take home everything in these suits, uh, but we're not going home for a long time. And right now our home is an Airbnb, so trying to restrain myself. I know that we said Hayes was gonna pick his toy, but we actually picked it for him, something we saw a few days ago. A $2 made in China fishing set. Interestingly, it didn't actually come with any fish. It came with jellyfish, crocodiles, and crabs. Yeah, so we no thought fish. it would be fun for the Riyadh Fountain. We're going home for his nap. It was a good morning. headed to the Amal Center. The Amal Center is a nonprofit for disadvantaged women and it trains them in restaurant and culinary schools. So they also operate a restaurant. Fridays are couscous day, so they're open most days of the week. But apparently Friday is the most popular because it's when they serve traditional couscous. According to the Lonely Planet entry on this place, a lot of restaurants don't really portray traditional cuisine that well. We found that to be a little bit true. Maybe we just haven't found the right spot yet, but I think a lot of it is kind of the things you come here to eat, tagine and couscous are traditionally made in the home, so it's harder to find an amazing version in a restaurant. So that was one of the reasons we're excited to check out this place. Um, really cool nonprofit on the website. You can actually read about all the different women and their stories um, that have participated in the training program and are working here today. And that's all I'll say because I really want to eat this. What's in there, Hayes? Can you say couscous? So, a lot of things in this video are just things that we enjoyed and Hayes happened to sort of enjoy, but file this in the things we probably wouldn't do without a two-year-old, but I'm kind of excited about it. We just bargained for a horse and carriage ride to the Palmeray, which I'm still not really sure what it is. We're gonna find out. and we just got stopped off to look at the camels. So interesting thing I've noticed about a lot of playgrounds here in Marrakesh is that none of the swings are still attached. I wonder if it's from COVID. But I've since read the article on the Palmeray and I'm gonna botch the story, so maybe just go read the Wikipedia entry yourself. But there's a legend about a sultan who was looking for land and he stopped here with his soldiers and they ate a bunch of dates and then they dropped them on the ground and some of them fell into the tran tranches? Tranches? Trenches. It didn't say trenches though. Tran whatever. It fell into the holes that were there from their soldier weapons. Oh. And out okay. of them, wait, okay, we're being told to look at something. Club Med. Club Med. Okay, we've seen Club Med. Anyway, palm trees sprouted from those dates. These are date palms. Which I don't think I knew came from palm trees. I also learned from the same Wikipedia article that in, 1920s, in the 1920s, um, 
you couldn't build buildings higher than palm trees. So some of them have also grown into the pavement. I don't know how the two are related, but that's what it said. I, this has been useless. Goodbye. is our third full day in Marrakesh and we are walking to Bahia Palace today. Now we're standing outside what we think is the Bahia Palace. We're being told that it's closed because the king and some prayer. Um, we're a little bit skeptical just because there's a number of situations like this here. Um, perhaps it is really closed, we don't know, but they keep telling us to go. Uh, the Jewish quarter is open, this and that is open, so it feels like Maybe they're just trying to reroute us. There's also no signage, so maybe we're in the wrong place, or maybe it is actually closed. Uh, that's the update. Where is it on the map? It's still this way. Would you look at that? It's actually open. So, we guess what's going on here is that if you type in Bahia Palace on Google Maps, you get sent to where we were, which obviously they've clocked. Um, I don't know what the end game was. I guess maybe people would ask them to take them to the, the Jewish, Jewish district that they were advertising. Uh, anyway, we, we then did some searching. This sounds so stupid that, I mean, all these people are here, no problem. Anyway, I typed Bahia Palace entrance onto Google Maps and it sent us here. Um, so obviously just a little Google Maps mistake that they're preying on. No hard feelings, but we've made it to the palace. Doesn't look like the king is here. Doesn't like it, look like it's closed down for, for praying. Uh, I can't wait to check it out. I think he should. Sorry, Pete's just directing me on the photo he wants. Bahia Palace has a long history that I'm going to fail at summarizing. It was built in 1860 by Sim Musa. Uh, it was expanded in the late 1800s by his son who took over. Uh, and he wanted to expand it to have room for his four wives and dozens of concubines. It's still used today occasionally for the king uh, to entertain guests. And it's one of the most visited attractions in Morocco. Just between January and April in 2019 alone, it had over 400,000 visitors. And it's very busy today, too. I just came here to say that I think I might agree to Pete having three other wives if it meant living somewhere like this. <laughs> oi, oi! Um, it's really beautiful. The tile work is amazing. We were just saying Morocco is one of those places where, like, aesthetically, everything is gorgeous. It's just really, I'm attracted to everything in the same way that I love India. Um, but this is this truly beautiful. We are on our way to Anima. It's the garden of Andre Heller. It's supposed to be a beautiful garden with a beautiful view of the Atlas Mountains and lots of art, including some Picasso and Keith Haring and stuff like that. Don't know too much about it, but it sounded like a nice activity. Uh, so that's what we're doing. They offer a free shuttle since it's like 45 minutes outside of town, so we booked that. So we left with enough time to go get a juice. So, I'll take this to be Okay, should I tell you about this guy? Yeah. Andre Heller. Born in 1947, is an Austrian artist, author, poet, singer, and yeah. songwriter. During his first visit in the early 70s, he falls in love with Marrakesh. In 2010, work began for what is now considered to be one of his most personal and ambitious projects to date. Anima. A beautiful symbol of life. Stroll along shady paths between sumptuous trees and shrubs. Blossom and fragrant run wonders pavilions and sculptures by the likes of Keith Haring, 
Pablo Picasso with breathtaking views of the often snow-capped Atlas Mountains featuring Mount Tupa. Anima is for people of all ages who want to experience. That car went in the water and it's gone forever. It's just so gorgeous. Hayes was desperate to run around, so we're in a park just outside of the Medina, called Cyber Park? I don't know why, I should look that up. Anyway, this fountain looks a little bit different than the photos. Update, this park was built by a sultan in the 18th century, but then they were gonna get rid of it, and in 2005 it was renovated by Maroc Telecom in exchange for saving it. There's also like a cyber cafe in it where they can create revenue, blah, blah, blah. There's also supposed to be like a bunch of screens and vaguely technological things to learn about things, but they appear to all be off. But it's, it's a really lovely park and Hayes um, just played soccer with some local kids. Very cool. We are at Le Jardin. Secret. It's here in the heart of Marrakesh, some beautiful gardens. I'm going to give you some more interesting facts as we go around. This is one of the largest and most ancient riads in Marrakesh. <laughs> That's the trick. <laughs> and it's got a series of waterways, fountains, and uh, Hayes is really enjoying it. Good place to come with a toddler. Yeah. I gave him. I was, uh, I was reading a Washington Post article that said that the Jardin Majorelle, which are the ones that Yves Saint Laurent and his partner saved, um, are completely overrun with tourists now and they like wear yellow hats and to match the blue and yellow buildings and it gets like 850,000 visitors a year or something. That's probably pre-COVID. Um, but they recommended this place because it's only been open for a couple of years. We're gonna go to both, but we haven't yet been to the other ones. Now we're at Le Jardin Majorelle. Um, it is very busy, but it's also very beautiful and totally worth coming. Um, but we saved it for last because today we are joined by... Ada! <laughs> Amy, John. Amy and John. If you've been watching any of our videos, you might have met their son Jeffrey in Rome and the Amalfi Coast and Naples with Ludo. And now we have his parents. Yeah. We're here. Jacques Bargerel was a French painter, lived in the 1800s to 1960. He came to Morocco in 1917 and acquired these beautiful gardens. And in 1930, he commissioned an Art Deco style uh, studio. Majorelle blue is this brilliant blue that shows up perfectly against the yellows. And eventually, he sold it and it was going to be torn down and developed until 1980, Yves Saint Laurent and his partner Pierre Berger saved it from developers and turned it into this expansive, gorgeous gardens, cacti and palm trees and all sorts of fountains that we see today. Worth noting here versus the other gardens is that the fish are so much bigger here. So that makes Hayes really happy. The most beautiful gardens I've ever seen in Morocco. Gorgeous. With cacti, fountains, and sun fish. tanning, little frogs, fish, and big turtles. fish. Yeah. 
and Fro perfect windows. Frogs that say ribbit. Do you recommend it? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how I, uh, how I do it. I just whip it out. You got it. He knew the camera was on, you know? What's going on? So we have just met up with uh, Jonathan and Gabrielle. Uh, we went and had some juice. Jonathan is one of the uh, participants in the Airbnb program that we are a part of. Um, and it's just been awesome. We've just spent the last couple of hours just hanging out and uh, just chatting and yeah, it's been really, really cool. So we're now chatting about Chattanooga. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. There are certainly things we liked in Marrakesh that didn't feature in this video, including dinner at our Riyadh and a cooking class. So you can check those out in videos coming soon.